Well, I suppose if, um, if you're speaking on behalf of investors on the sidelines, and a lot of them are, uh, any deal that's going to avert um, the debt ceiling kicking off and the shutdown lasting any longer is going to be viewed positively. However, this is, this is not necessarily uh, a long-term fix. And most of the investors I'm speaking to and the ones that I represent as well, most of them are on the sidelines until they see that there is a bit of a shift in the way yeah. politics is done over there. Because whilst they may get through this and the market is behaving in a manner that suggests they will get through this, um, there's a lot of damage to credibility and a lot of damage to, to the, uh, w the global opinion as to how America can manage its own affairs. Johnny, which is something that term. here in Europe has been kind of the same, but at this point, do we actually care that this is a longer term solution? You see, I would probably be quite relieved if I was a market participant that mm. we get through the end of the week without any major blow ups. Yes, and everybody believes the same thing. I mean, they, I mean if, you look at, if you look at the volatility, if you look at the VIX, for example, the VIX is still at 15 or 16. Uh, crude oil has bounced this morning to over 102. Um, equity indices are down very marginally. No one is really thinking uh, that there's going to be anything except some kind of muddle through solution. Sort of the central case is a muddle through right now. So I don't think the market has a very high expectation of a solution that's that's credible, which is, un which is not really what I'm hoping for. But, but Johnny, what happens if you don't even get a muddle through? Then I think what you see is you then start to see people crunching the numbers as to what sort of steps the US would have to make to really, uh, in the medium to long term, correct its fiscal situation. Yep. And that could be a drag of 2 or 3% of GDP, the equivalent of you know, slashing of spending that could have that much of an effect on, on GDP in the US. And then growth estimates for, uh, for, for all indices, for all paradigms, everything changes. And I think that's what, um, that's what the capital markets will then see, see as being a major worry. Johnny, I know the markets are now saying, look, we're going to get an agreement, some sort of an agreement, even if it's just for the next five, six weeks. Mm -hmm. But how are you protecting your investors from potential market dislocation? If, if we don't get an agreement mm. at all? Well, uh, for, for starters, we have uh, a good degree of cash on the sidelines, uh, which is principally on valuation grounds because we really, uh, we, we tend to have a very sort of constancy of purpose approach to the capital markets. Uh, we, we like to buy things of value uh, where we can understand them and where uh, we see long-term viability. And that's not necessarily so easy to find at this point. Yeah. Volatility at this price is very cheap to keep as protection. Yeah,